distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to John Monet Memorial Conference celebrating the 30th anniversary of John Monet Program and Europe Day of 2019. I'm Professor Jason Lee, uh, today's Master of Conference, and I'm a John Monet Chair at Korea University. So on, on behalf of Korea University, I once again warmly welcome all of you to this uh, very meaningful conference. Uh, I will, we will start the opening ceremony, and the opening address will be delivered by Professor Song Hoon Park, Executive Director of KU Kiev SBS EU Center, and John Monet Chair of Korea University. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Song Hoon Park. His Excellency, uh, Dr. Michael Reiter. Ambassador of the European Union to Korea, Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues and friends, and ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the EU Center of Korea University, titled KU Kiev SBS EU Center, I'd like to welcome all of you to this uh, international conference. I feel honored and greatly uh, pleased to organize this uh, uh, important event in a close co cooperation with uh, the EU delegation and also the Nordic Benelux Center of Korea University. In fact, uh, this event is a uh, result of uh, common efforts of seven Jang Monet programs uh, currently run in Korea. Korea University is running um, Jang Monet Network Project, which is under my uh, leadership. And also we have uh, four Jang Monet Center of Excellences uh, at uh, Seoul National University, Yonsei University, um, Busan National University, and Hangul University of Foreign Studies. And also uh, the EU uh, Studies Association of Korea, USA Korea, is running an association program and uh, last but not least, uh, the Gyeongbuk National University is uh, running Jang Monet module program. And uh, the uh, six uh, institutions of higher education uh, of Korea running these programs are all gathered. And uh, we have uh, collaborated to, ho to host this event and uh, we are all the co-hosts. As far as I remember, this is the first academic activity we have ever co-organized in the past 30 years. So at this juncture, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to Ambassador Reiter for his great initiative to make this event possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Zhang Monet is alive, especially his idea of peace and community building may be very valuable in the context of East Asia and Northeast Asia, where uncertainties and uh, instabilities are displayed in international relations. I am confident that the speakers of this conference will delve into the questions of how Zhang Monet's ideas, philosophy, and uh, spirit can be utilized to enable peace and prosperity in the region and the uh, entire world, and we'll be able to come up with some concrete recommendations to policymakers. I hope all of you enjoy this uh, conference greatly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Park. Uh, next, a uh, congratulatory remark will be delivered by His Excellency Dr. Mihai Reicher. Ambassador of the European Union to Republic of Korea. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming Ambassador Mihail Reicher. Well, good afternoon, friends, colleagues. As Professor Park was saying, I'm very glad that this cooperation could happen I invest uh, twice a year 
a lunch in all the, all the uh, chairs and representatives of Jean Monnet. And I'm very pleased to see that also meetings, lunches, receptions can serve a purpose and lead to results. And cooperation, I think, is very much the idea for which the European Union stands. And cooperation is exactly what you need here in Northeast Asia in order to come to this peace for which many are working in the region and outside of the region. Well, you all know, and as good Koreans, I think you have uh, practiced what was to do. Yesterday was the 8th of May, Parents' Day in Korea. It's a day to express gratitude to parents for bringing us into life and helping us to become what we are today. But today is the 9th of May. And the European Union celebrates the pioneers that brought the European Union to life and made it what it is today. So what are we celebrating today? Well, Robert Schuman's proposal for former enemies to pool authority over the strategic assets of that time, we are talking about the 1950s, coal and steel ultimately led to a new form of international relations in Europe. States learned to cooperate instead of fighting. It was not, and that's important to underline, the end of different and sometimes opposing interests no, but the means have changed. The party with the better argument, the party that could build consensus, which could network, is now the winner. The conference rooms of Brussels replaced the blood-soaked fields of Flanders, a notorious battleground of World War I. With peace between EU member states now taken for granted, you might wonder, what is the purpose of the European Union today? And I'm pretty sure many of them say, oh, this guy is talking and he's forgetting about Brexit. No, no, I'm not forgetting about Brexit, but Brexit is also, I would say, a certain show of strength of the European Union, because you don't have to start a war or whatever to get out of the European Union if you don't want any longer. You just write a letter. According to Article 50, I want to leave. And then the divorce starts. And as any divorce or most of the divorces, it's a, rose, it's a little bit a war of roses where one partner does not exactly know how to act. But the important thing is, you write a letter and the legal process gets started. Well, we know that 60 years ago, Jean Monnet was faced with a very similar question. So what does it mean, his project, for the ordinary people? What does it mean to them? Well, and he gave the answer. I don't think there is any one person in Europe who's lived the last 15 years, Jean Monnet speaking, who for a certain moment has not realized that a great deal of the catastrophes we experience came from the fact that those nations have been separated by national sovereignty. And through the European coal and steel community, they see this is the effect of uniting the people. The crisis which we face today, climate change, the threat of we weapons of mass destruction, proliferation, terrorism, radicalization, mastering refugee flows, all demand a collective response that goes beyond, beyond the national level, beyond the national boundary. Without cooperation, there is no solution to the problems which I have mentioned. We call it today connectivity. 
ICT, energy, transport, infrastructure, people-to-people -people links through trade, investment, education, and tourism. These are the channels that bring people together across borders. Today, today's world is increasingly connected. At the same time, it is increasingly unstable and unpredictable. It faces new threats from climate change to the spillover effects of conflict into other regions, including mass migration or cyber warfare. Managing such a connected but unstable world requires the kind of effective multilateralism and rule of law on which the European Union is built. Indeed, the European Union is now the leading champion in defending these values. Again, let me, let me quote Jean Monnet. The sovereign nations of the past alone can no longer solve the problems of the present. But as we are talking in Korea, still the question remains, is the experience of building peace and integration in Europe relevant to Asia, whose historical conditions and contexts vary vastly? Well, I'm not here to say that one size fits all approach to building trust and cooperation in Asia is the solution. There are certainly difficult, complex and unique challenges each region and each state faces that cannot be generalized. However, East Asia already has institutionalized regional processes, think of ASEAN, and related forums like the ASEAN Regional Forum or the East Asia Summit, the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat here in Seoul, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and last but not least, the Asia-Europe meeting connecting Europe and Asia. President Moon has recognized the potential for functional cooperation to build regional peace and cooperation. Indeed, he specifically referred to the European coal and steel community in his vision of a Northeast Asian regional rail community and networks of connectivity to the, to the North and to Central Asia and with South and Southeast Asia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we also have learned in Europe is leadership is necessary in transforming vision into reality. Let me quote Jean Monnet again. The integrated Europe, as we know, has never existed. One had to generally create Europe. You need an act of creation. You need a creator. And this is exactly where we venerate Jean Monnet, Robert Schumann, Konrad Adenauer, Charles de Gaulle, and European Commission presidents like Jacques Delors. Of course, integration and building peace is not only a top-down process. Again, as President Moon said this week, great achievements are often brought about by the will and thrive of the ordinary people. Jean Monnet, it must be the people that must take charge. This is pre precisely where education is so important. Jean Monnet, the community we created is not an end in it itself, but it is a process of change continuing in process. Well, the European Union has always been dedicated to projects to expand educational opportunities. Studies of integration appropriately bear the name Jean Monnet. But also the Erasmus program encourages students in Europe to cross borders to study, to research, and to work in other countries. Well, they are young students. They also fall in love. With four million students having participated in Erasmus, 
we already have a generation of Erasmus children, born to former Erasmus students who got to know each other while on Erasmus exchange programs. The, un the unique benefit of such an educational exchange is that it allows us to test, to test our own values, to learn from each other, to broaden our horizons, because that's what works against xenophobia, chauvinism, and contributes to the building of open societies, and open societies are more productive and more democratic. It is good to experience that a problem has not just one solution. Persons with different cultures and backgrounds have different ways of problem solving. We just have to respect them. Solving the problem is the solution, not imposing one's will or method. We call that unity in diversity. We are, we are planning on expanding this educational program, spend more money where our mouth is. We want to create more opportunities for people to go abroad, including school pupils, vocational learners, apprentices, students, but also young people outside the formal education system. Korea is a partner to the Erasmus programs, and the U.S. continued to expand these educational opportunities beyond Europe. Over 4,730 projects in the field of European integration studies are funded. More than 1,000 universities in 86 countries throughout the world offer courses funded by the Jean Monnet program. The EU also awards scholarships for master students from around the world. Already eight Korean higher education institutions have participated in a consortium with European universities to run joint master degree programs through Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degrees Program. Well, we believe that such academic opportunities becomes the basis of a much stronger relationship for future collaboration. Well, I would say Campus Asia is a good example here in Asia to overcome the legacies of the past, bringing Korean, Chinese, and Japanese students together. So today we celebrate the building of peace through connectivity and integration. So in concluding, let me quote Jean Monnet once more. A hope and an insurance that's the greatest contribution to peace that can be made. Thank you very much. And we can ha I brought from Lausanne recently, from the archives of Jean Monnet, a few original quotes from Jean Monnet. And my collaborators greatly put some subtitles for those who prefer to read in Korean. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your cooperation. And thank you very much for being here. And just make sure that the Europe Day idea is not limited to one day. It should be for 365 days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, as Ambassador Reiter said, uh, next we have a very special congratulatory remark. Uh, the John Money Foundation, based in, in Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, sent us a very special video clip in which we will meet Jean Monnet. So uh, we will watch and listen to his message. So ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Jean Monnet. Well, Mr. Monet, do you think that such a thing can work in your experience that you've had here in the community? Yeah, it does work. It does work. In fact, uh, the existence of the coal and steel community is the proof that uh, unification of Europe is possible. Now, when you ask whether it works, it, the, the real question is whether the people of this Six Nations accept, for the first time, decisions that are being made by an authority that is not 
one of their national of their national sovereign. Well, have they? What specific things have you done that haven't been done before? Well, we've, as you know, created, according to this treaty and the powers that have been given to this high authority, we've created the uh, this common coal market. We've eliminated the barriers that separated those countries. And uh, we've eliminated the double prices and uh, the uh, licenses for import and export. And uh, we have, which is the first time it's ever been done, we've uh, now living a tax. This high authority, this community, is living a tax on the production of coal and steel of uh, those six nations. What about ordinary people? What does this mean to them? Well, I don't think there's any, any one. Uh, in Europe who's lived the last uh, uh, 15 years who had uh, a certain moment has not realized that uh, a great deal of the reasons of the catastrophes that we've experienced came from the fact that those nations have been separated by national sovereignty. And they see in this effort of uniting uh, the, the people a hope and an assurance that that is the greatest contribution to peace that uh, can be made. And uh, they see in it, at the same time, uh, creation of a big market, therefore prosperity and peace. Mr. Money, your uh, coal steel community is pretty much on the rails now. Well, what's your next step? Where do you go from here? Well, the, the next step is the political authority. I think um, uh, coal and steel was important because it establishes the same common basis of, for the economies of the people of Europe. But we've reached a point now where the people themselves must take charge of that organization. And there's no other way but have them vote. Because in a uh, democracy, how are you going to have the people themselves feel and know that what is happening is their affair unless they vote? Well, do you mean a constitution, a United States of Europe? Right. With elections? There must be. There must be elections, there must be a political authority, but a political authority emanating from the people themselves. And but for that uh, reason, uh, elections of the European, by the European people has become now an absolute necessity. Do you have any timetable in mind? Yeah, I think we're very close to really? that. Yeah, Because you know that the uh, six governments of this uh, Schuman plan have asked the assembly of the Schuman plan with the addition of a few members, to draft a plan of constitution. This has been done and uh, is, uh, has been presented to the governments. Now it's up to the governments now to um, uh, discuss it and uh, accept it, which I believe they will. And my opinion is that uh, we will have accepted by the government and submitted to Parliament a draft constitution creating a political authority in Europe with the elections by the people. And I believe that the next year or two we'll see that. And once you have a, an election by the people of Europe the same day voting in Cognac and Bremen and Hamburg and Italy and everywhere, then you've really changed something fundamental and you've established, I think the essential uh, condition that will make the states of Europe happen very quickly. Okay, so the further messages of John Money will be delivered in the round table. So uh, we will, uh, oh, without break, we will start the John Money round table with presentations and, and discussions. And the John Money round table will be chaired by Professor Song Hoon Park. Thank you, Professor Lee, and uh, thank you, Michael Reiterer, for your inspiring and insightful speech. Uh, let's get started uh, with our discussion on Zhang Monet, uh, bringing Zhang Monet back past, present, and future. Um, we have uh, not much time. Uh, I think uh, everybody will agree with me that uh, we can talk and talk for hours and hours, but uh, uh, we have only one and a half hours uh, or less uh, because uh, we have to finish this session at uh, uh, 5.40 uh, 
or 545, because uh, our university's president, uh, uh, Professor Zhang Jintek, is coming uh, to give his special closing remarks. He has to leave. And also we have uh, the e Europe Day reception, which is starting at uh, 6 o'clock uh, p.m. So that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, to allocate uh, time quite effectively. Uh, we have 11 panelists, and uh, I will begin this session by introducing uh, the panelists uh, to you. Uh, first of all, Professor Jason Lee, uh, the mess of the, uh, today's uh, event, uh, Jung Moon Chair of Korea University. Dr. Hung Jong Kim, a Senior Research Fellow at the uh, Korea Institute for International Economic Policy. He is uh, uh, participating in policy making of Korean government vis-a-vis uh, -vis European Union and European countries. Uh, Professor Jaehun Park of Incheon National University is here, and uh, he is uh, the person who translated uh, Jang Mone's uh, memoir into Korean. So you have uh, this uh, thick book, and this is the result of his uh, efforts uh, in cooperation with another professor, who is uh, Ong Usak. And uh, we have uh, Benjamin Thompson, professor at uh, Gyeongbuk National University, and he's running Zhang Monet module program at the uh, university, uh, at the uh, university. And Professor Kim Si Hong uh, in the program is not able to come, so that he is replaced by Professor Kim Bong Chol, his deputy, and his uh, deputy director of uh, Zhang Monet Center of Excellence at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. <coughs> Uh, we have uh, next to me Professor Moon uh, at Seoul National University. And uh, Professor Moon is actually the first Jang Mone chair awarded to Korea. So he's uh, uh, the uh, initiating uh, the um, Jang Mone chair in Korean uh, society, we can say. And uh, uh, Mr. Bae Myung Bok uh, from Jungang Daily, he is uh, editor at large and columnist, and he has uh, been writing on Europe for many, many years. So that uh, Ambassador Reiter has asked me to write uh, good things on Europe when he met uh, here <laughs> for the first time. Uh, also, we have uh, Professor Yon Ho Lee, uh, a uh, EU expert, EU politics, uh, and uh, Yonsei University. And he is uh, running, uh, he's a director of uh, the Chang Mone Center of Excellence at Yonsei University. Professor Che Deng Yi, uh, is uh, uh, from uh, Busan National University, and also he is uh, Chang Mone Chair of uh, EU Economy. <coughs> Professor Taeyong Kim uh, from Myeongji University, uh, but he is a former president of USA Korea, EU Studies Association of Korea. And uh, he is running uh, the Zhang Mone Association Program, which is supporting the Association of Professors. And the user Korea was selected as a uh, ORD. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, Professor Kim Nam Guk, uh, another Zhang Mone Chair at Korea University, and he is an uh, expert on uh, EU politics. So we have 11 members now, and uh, we have only 70 minutes. So. I'd like to ask uh, all the panelists uh, to uh, speak five minutes. I'm sorry for that. Five minutes. Maximum six to seven minutes. So uh, I don't like to use that, but uh, I have brought uh, this one. One minute, two minutes left. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, we can uh, start our discussion. Uh, we have uh, divided uh, the discussion into three parts, past, present, and future. But the speakers will not be confined to speak uh, on uh, the allocated title. We can uh, have discussion on past, present, and future comprehensively. Right? So uh, why don't we start with the Professor Jason Lee. Uh, he is uh, talking about the connectivity idea. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Jason Lee, um, and I'm sharing my great pleasure and honor to organize this, this conference, but at the same time delivering 
the messages on, on Jean Monnet. So I will start the, uh, the presentation with the title, Jean Monnet and the idea of connectivity. Okay, uh, who is Jean Monnet? I would say he, he was a man of network, okay? And well, if, if you Google, or na if you go to Google Naver, and it's a major portal, and, and type Jean Monnet, and uh, the Google would say he was a French political economist and diplomat. And, and from this point, a little, a very small kind of confusion appears, especially in, in, in Naver and in, in Korean media. So political economist sounds like a scholar. So it is not surprising to find in some Korean media, Professor Jean Monnet or Dr. Jean Monnet, because political economist should be doctor or professor. But in fact, Jean Monnet didn't go to college. But he accumulated a lot more valuable experience from the real world. So when I, when, when I was studying the European studies, I thought to myself, OK, can I be someday like Jean Monnet? And soon I realized, oh, I studied too much. I stayed in, 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 in the university for, for too long. But, but I, I'm, I, I'm truly honored to be uh, the, the Jean Monnet chair and, and uh, standing on in uh, this conference. And actually, uh, the more detailed stories about Jean Monnet will be delivered by Professor Park. Jae-hoon, who is a Korean translator of, of his, his memoirs. So I will leave this part to Professor Park. So Jean Monnet provides the idea of European integration, and he's the father of European integration. But I would say, yes, he was an, I well, I would say he was an idealist. But at the same time, he was a realist in making his idea realized. Who is Jean Monnet? He's a French. But actually, he was an outsider to a typical French elite groups. And he spent a lot of time in the, in, in the UK, in the United States, and during the First and Second World War. So he was the European. He was a man of European integration. But at the same time, I would say he was transatlanticist. That means he spent a lot of time in the, in the US and one of his biggest political assets was his Washington network. The Secretary Dulles and reaching to President Eisenhower. And so he knew many key policy makers in the United States, especially in the aftermath of the Second World War. And that became a source of his the, the mediating power. He was not just an idealist, but he was a deal maker. He knew how to make a deal. And as a son of cognac makers, he had cognac in his pantry. And uh, well, while reading some of his, his well, the, the, the many history books, the, a couple of the US counterpart and European counterpart start the, the, writing a note or a letter saying, oh, I still remember the flavor of the cognac you gave me last Christmas. Okay, so he was a man of network. And I would say idea of integration, idea alone cannot survive. Idea can survive with interest. Idea can survive with the institution. Interest, mutual interest, the win-win setting. Mutual interest will give nutrition to idea. And institution will give a durabil well, durability of idea to persist. So I would say mutual interest was and are essential. And a typical case was the European coal and steel community. And idea should be supported by real politics. It should survive in the politics. And it was Robert Schumann who actually provided the political support for his idea. Next, idea can survive by multiple supporter. And this, I would say, founding fathers. Not one leader, not one flag, but 
multiple flag and multiple leaders, these people could stand together. And so that was the, how idea can, can lead to connectivity. So this is my last page. We started the, uh, this conference with the idea of bringing John Wane back and, and what we should bring. I would say first bring people back. So people at the center of integration. Second, bringing network back. Single flag is not sufficient. We need network. Bringing interest back. Win-win setting, common interest is important. Bringing politics back. A careful political support and engineering is also important. And lastly, bring the dream back. A long-term vision is a driving force for integration. So I will stop my presentation here, and I will pass the remaining message to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Kim from KIP. He has uh, the title of uh, Brexit in the Eye of uh, Zhang Mone. How Zhang Mone sees the Brexit discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm talking about the Brexit. I have been dealing with the uh, Brexit uh, since the fall, I think, of 2015. And I have conducted research and um, sometimes participate in conference and also sometimes giving lecture and sometimes even broadcasting to the public as well. And uh, after uh, receiving the unexpected decisions of the British people, that was two, about the, the three years ago, on June 24th, 2016. And observing chaos and frustration over the past two and a half to almost three years, uh, I have wondered actually uh, how Zhang Mone uh, would have resolved this situation if he is now <coughs> here in Europe. An excellent negotiator and truthful, sincere, and idealistic pioneer of European integration, he must have a solution, I guess, maybe. Sometimes I think, but in many cases, I would also think even. Uh, Zhang Mone uh, would give up producing any clear solution of the chaotic situation like this. This is why I came to see Zhang Mone's memoir again and again uh, through the, uh, the Professor Park Jones uh, translation, also the English version. Sorry, I, I do not touch the, uh, the, uh, the French version. Right? <laughs> and Zhang Mone and his relationship with England was very special, very unique, distinctive. In 1905, when he was the, uh, just uh, 16 years old, he was first dispatched to London by his father's instruction. Uh, and then in London, he learned both business and English for uh, two years. And then he also dispatched to Canada, Egypt, and Russia, and the United States, and then many other uh, countries, including China as well. And during the first and second world war, he pioneered the establishment of the Franco-British Accord, coordinating arms production. I think that is the first establishment that um, he has official you know, relations with the, the Britain. And this approach came to uh, fruition later in the war with the joint efforts such as with executives and also the Allied Maritime Transport Council. His affection uh, to the UK and British people was very special. And then without the UK, the future of Europe would not be viable, he firmly believed. His appreciation of the UK does not only just reach the war coalition between the two countries. He appreciated the, the values that the British people preserve, such as uh, respect for freedom and respect for institutionalization. Of course, I mean, there, are many, many, there are many things about the Zhang uh, Mone's words about the institutionalization, so I would not uh, repeat the, uh, the importance of institutionalization. And um, that was one of the, the reasons why the Zhang Mone was so optimistic uh, to, jo the British, to join the, the Britain uh, to this community. However, when it comes to the European integration, the UK uh, was sometimes intentionally and sometimes unintentionally hinder the process of further integration of the original six. Let me take an example. In 1956, around there was 56 and 57, uh, then the Prime Minister, British Prime Minister Harold Mangmillan proposed the, the idea of a free trade uh, area uh, to the community. 
It is planned to include all OEC, OEEC uh, countries together with the common market uh, countries of six. Is this a progress or a retro retrogress? Then he explains clearly that he preferred the future of community without diluting. If it is necessary to link the UK and other European countries to the community, it is equally important that this union should respect the integration of the community itself. So integration of community, preserving the value of the community, should be ahead of the, uh, the interest between the UK and the community. This is a part of speech delivered by Zhang Monet in 1957 to Harrogate in the United Kingdom. We can find Zhang Monet's understanding of the UK through his words to the then Federal Minister of Economics of the West Germany, Ludwig Erhard, in 1959. No one wants to see the UK join the European community more than I do. But if we make too much concession from the beginning, the UK will not participate in the community, he added. This was not a part of the, my tactics, but the rather a firm belief formed in the course of many negotiations with the UK. That is my experience, and Zhang Wen said. When they negotiate with others, their national trait were to seek their own special uh, place, which made them not to move much. It had been a, a problem in the very difficult conversations of the Schumann plan in the 1950s. They re refused to participate in the Paris meeting with the same obligation, under the same condition as other countries. Most of them now agree that there would not have been a Schumann plan if we have provided concession to the UK. Because you are of reality, we will negotiate with you. That is the, uh, the words from the British uh, people as uh, Roger uh, Mackins uh, two years, after two years. Following his words in his memoirs, I would guess that with indomitable courage, he would have promoted the progress of integration and the reform of the European Union to minimize the side effect of the Brexit for the future of the European Union. Of course, he would do his best to conclude a soft Brexit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kim. I'd like to invite uh, Professor Park Tae hoon uh, from Incheon National University. Uh, he can have uh, one or two minutes more because he's remembering uh, Zhang Monet from his reading of uh, Zhang Monet's memoir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just due to time limit, I have to just uh, uh, go to the, my first slide. Okay, this is the, the uh, sentence from the, I guess, the, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, memorizing some uh, story. Uh, he was born in France, a uh, wild traveler. Uh, he died at age uh, 90 near Paris, and first season of United Europe. Okay, uh, actually what the Zhang Monet said is the United States of Europe. Uh, he inspired and helped to create uh, earlier, from his office in the uh, uh, Willard Hotel, he contributed greatly to uh, America's Victory Program. Okay, this is a very the one thing, very important thing. Uh, many people didn't uh, didn't uh, acknowledge it uh, because, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, ambassador already. His uh, main, you know, uh, contribution is uh, actually he contributed many things to, during the World War Two, World War One, and World War Two. Okay. <coughs> Already, uh, Professor Lee said that who is Zhang Monet? He is uh, usually considered as a father of European Union. As uh, also he mentioned that he he didn't uh, graduate, well, he, even he didn't enter any college. He many he got uh, all of his knowledge from actually his home home meeting, home dining that kind of thing. So uh, also he was born as a son of French Konya merchant. This uh, Monet Konya is still produced. So my son is uh, brought to me to uh, last year. So I taste it. <laughs> yeah, Monekonya, and and also uh, later he become a, a diplomat by uh, during the World War One. At the time, the Prime Minister uh, uh, French, uh, France, uh, Prime Minister Viviani. It was a very occasional case. 
uh, he is an ordinary man, is, he is just picked up by, uh, you know, uh, Viviani by, is a diplomat. And also, uh, after World War I, he worked uh, as a banker in the U.S. But unfortunately, uh, his uh, bank is uh, uh, bankrupt, so he left the uh, United States. But that bank later became a bank of America. Mm. So if he, he was successful in the uh, uh, bank, then maybe instead of his uh, father of the European Union, he may be a very famous banker. <laughs> And uh, as you see, as you know well, he was a founding father of ECSC, uh, high authority. And then, uh, as you know well, he designed 1950 Schumann uh, plan declaration. And also, uh, this is mentioned uh, already. Uh, he has a close connection with uh, the German Chancellor Adenauer and uh, Schumann and also De Gaulle. And also, uh, at the time, uh, U.S. President Roosevelt. So he uh, utilized this, this kind of old connection you know, to make uh, European integration uh, possible. So one thing, uh, not many people noticed that is uh, since 1970, he uh, organized some uh, non-government organization, which is called Action Committee for United States of Europe. So in this, uh, using this organization, he invited many leaders through the whole uh, uh, Europe, mainly uh, from leaders of major uh, parties, political parties, and also labor unions, labor unions. So if the, uh, in, in this side of uh, committee, major uh, decisions are made, then maybe each, each country, maybe they uh, easily decide, make the decision. So, uh, during uh, his, uh, you know, uh, afterwards his uh, uh, life, uh, until he died, he just, uh, you know, uh, stayed, used this uh, uh, committee. Okay, let me briefly uh, summarize what is his thought and principles. The first thing is uh, institutionalism. So this is some quotation for his memoir. Each man's experience starts again from the beginning. Only institutions grow wiser. They accumulate collective experience, and owing to this experience, this wisdom, man subject to the same rules, will let their own nature change. But their behavior created not what he said. He is a, a quotation from Henry uh, Frederick Amiel. Okay, so uh, this is the first element of his uh, thought. And this is more important, I guess. Trust building. So many people asked him, what is the secret of his negotiation? What is the, uh, your negotiation skill? But he simply says that, you know, let's put our cards on the table, and everyone could be sure that we are talking to him in the same terms as to everyone else. But it is essential to tell people, okay? It is the only way to win trust. Without trust, I will never obtain anything. So, uh, this is a very simple secret, in a sense. Okay, third, federalism. Okay, I already mentioned, he, he wanted to make Europe. So, this is a kind of federation. Okay, so, uh, he wanted to uh, emphasize, really, delegation of sovereignty is essential. Instead of simple cooperation between governments. So this is uh, distinguished from confederation. I guess, maybe the professor, uh, the Dr. Kim Hung Jung said that <clears throat> what is the main advice to Brexit phenomena recently? I guess if Zhang Wan is still alive, he, he would say that you should hurry to political federation. There is a solution, okay? Do not go back to, just go forward. That could be his solution. Lastly, action-oriented pro pragmatism. He's a really pragmatist, okay? He's not an idealist. He is a really uh, from business group. He's not a uh, uh, scholar, okay? So his idea is really based on some uh, really uh, some pragmatic some uh, realities. So that's why he organized Action Committee for the United States of Europe. 
Okay. Okay. This is uh, I took this picture. This is from Luxembourg. Okay. This is a uh, ECSC uh, former headquarters building. Now this is used as uh, some kind of bank. So you can see there's some you know uh, uh, indication for this building is a former headquarter. Okay, conclusion. So this is what I'm doing. Okay. Why why we have to learn Zhang Monet? Because we wanted to make Asia some integrated and uh, make Asia a community. Okay. So this is uh, my some piece of some effort, Asia Economic Community Forum. The slogan is create one Asia together since 2009. So every year, uh, I'm organizing some conference. And Asia Economic Community Forum, so this year too, I'm organizing. So everybody you are interested in, I welcome to this join this conference, including ambassador. Okay. November 7th, 8th, Incheon, uh, Sheraton. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just show question. If you make some correct answer, I'll give this book. <laughs> My question is, anybody knows uh, uh, who is Zhang Monet's wife? Where, where she's from? Anybody? Italy, Italy. Italy? Italy? Yes, <laughs> Russia. <laughs> but uh, you are, I, what I want is from student. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we have completed the section of uh, past of the Zhang Monet. Now we go over to present. Uh, we have uh, Zhang Monet and uh, peace building in Northeast Asia. Under this title, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Benjamin Thompson from Gyeongbuk National University. Hello, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, to discuss and to think about peace building today in East Asia in Jean Monnet's terms, is actually for me to engage in a particular kind of political theory. I'm, I'm a political theorist. And this is perhaps somewhat ironic because as we've heard, Jean Monnet didn't go to university and he didn't really have much time for theoretical politics or political philosophy. Um, and yet nonetheless, there's been a burgeoning literature trying to see Jean Monnet as some kind of political theorist. And this is quite interesting because it's not really a sense of trying to put together what Jean Monnet meant by his own statements as political theory, but a sense of trying to creatively reimagine what he was up to for present purposes. Now, as the case is, most of the literature which looks at Jean Monnet and his writings and his, his legacy in this way is tightly integrated with the actual ongoing European project. It's about European Union integration, and primarily Jean mm. Monnet gets used as a kind of theorist of European Union integration. Was he an intergovernmentalist? Was he a supranationalist? Was he a neo-functionalist? These sorts of debates are, are really, really key to how it is that Jean Monnet gets used as a political theorist. And this is really quite interesting, but it's interesting in Europe. I'm not sure it's interesting for us here today in East Asia. So I want to kind of go back to Jean Monnet's writings and to reimagine him in a different way. Not for the purposes of thinking about or practicing European Union integration, but for thinking about how it is the sorts of first steps towards durable peace in East Asia can be cemented, can be followed up on, and can lead to something different. To do so, I want to think of Monet as a political theorist of equality, of equality of a very specific kind. He was an egalitarian in terms of how it is that we should act and what sorts of institutions we should be acting. But we was also an egalitarian in terms of how we think. He focused on the idea of an attitude of unity. And he thought that this was one of the most important ideas that could be cultivated in order to ensure peace building and durable institutions. So I want to look at the essay, A Ferment of Change, which Monet wrote in the 1960s. And here he, he really looks at the sorts of threats which Europe 
and what becomes the European Union have managed to overcome, but threats which are still very much alive in his world, very much alive in our world, what are these threats? Relations, he writes, in the previous hundred years, took the form either of domination, if one country was much stronger than the others, or of the trading of advantages, if there was a balance of powers between them. This balance, he writes, was necessarily unstable, and the concessions made in an agreement one year could always be retracted the next. Monet, in a sense, is thinking of what we today would call international relations realism, and the idea of offensive and defensive realism studied in international relations departments today kind of nicely summarize and deal with what Monet is talking about. But it's this problem of domination which is the worst of the two. Domination, its exercise and experience was egregious, and rivalry in pursuit and defense of this kind of relationship is, of course, charged with power, with resistance to that power, and, of course, the potential for violence. This occurred not only because of material inequalities between states, but precisely because of an attitude of domination, which Monet thinks had ruled state policies in Europe for so many centuries, he writes. This attitude was the stuff of what Monet describes also, and briefly, as 19th century power philosophy. So how do we get past that? Um, well, Monet was not a bill blueprint maker. Um, as we've seen, he was a pragmatist, he was a contextualist, and he wanted to take advantage of opportunities as they arose. So he didn't have a grand plan all of the way along. But two things matter most. One, we need a silent revolution in men's minds, he writes. It's that attitude for unity. There must be a recognition of some confluence of interests beyond those we have in our particular country. Two, we need supranational rulemaking of some kind. This might be federalism, it might be something else. In fact, he's not too particular on what kind of rulemaking, but we need rulemaking that goes beyond simply the representation of interests of separate individual states. Put those two things together, and they mutually reinforce each other. So, lessons for today. One. Although the European Union is an interesting experiment and a very successful one, we can't do the same thing in Asia. We need a different course, we need our own pragmatism, we need to start afresh. Two, how we think matters. Thinking about the attitude of domination and power philosophy has some real significant conclusions. And we might say that how we study international politics can serve a certain kind of self-reinforcing and self-fulfilling prophecy. We have to be careful about how we study politics, and we have to be careful about what kinds of political theory we credit or discredit in the study of international relations. It's ironic, in a way, that we professors are talking about this here today at this learned institution, but I think, just maybe, I trust even that Jean Monnet would approve anyway. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Professor Kim bong Sol. I just want to mention about uh, several words. Um, because I'm not your Professor Kim Chi Hong, uh, the, the Zhang Mone uh, chair in our university. Of course, I'm your Professor Kim as well. But um, yes, uh, uh, we have learned many things about the, uh, uh, the idea of Zhang uh, 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 Mone. And the president in the Northeast Asia uh, we think about the, uh, the, the building of the uh, peace in this area. Um, actually, uh, I spent uh, four years in the uh, front line uh, against uh, North Korea uh, when I was 20-something years old. So I know uh, many things about the uh, North Korean uh, issues. But the thing is that North Korea is the, uh, the, the people in there are Koreans. The simple ideas, I mean the, 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 the philosophy of the Jean Monnet, the uh, United States of Europe, uh, still in the Korean Peninsula we have uh, many uh, theories or sometimes dangerous uh, issues in, in this area. But we can cover, I believe that we can cover the, uh, the sensitive issues <coughs> with the, uh, a very simple and pure idea 
uh, from Jean Monnet, the United States of Europe. Well, yeah, this is very sensitive things considering the uh, uh, Korean national law. But my idea is that uh, if we apply the simple philosophy to the Korean Peninsula, the United States of Europe, the, uh, for example, United States of Korea, Yes, I know that it, it's very, very difficult job, and um, it takes a long time. But to make the peace in the uh, Northeast Asia, we have to overcome these things first. The, the peace in Korean Peninsula is the, uh, the first step for the, uh, uh, the, build, the building of peace in Northeast Asia. So let me say that uh, the very simple things. Zhang Monet is not, he's not just the, uh, the idea makers. He did many things to make come true in uh, of his idea in the uh, European area. So um, young generation have to do if we learned about the, uh, the philosophy of Zhang Monet, then we have to do something to apply this idea to the Korean Peninsula to make the, uh, uh, maybe uh, the United States of Korea. And then we can, as the second step, we can think about the, uh, the, the pure, whole, final, peace in Northeast Asia. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kim. Uh, Professor Kim bong Chol took a very bold step talking sitting. So uh, I think uh, we can talk uh, sitting as well from, the uh, from now. So I'd like to invite uh, Professor Moon of uh, Seoul National University. Thank you. Um, I'll try to frame my talk in three stages, uh, as uh, uh, just like it is in the program. Uh, so uh, past, present, and the future. So what is the state of uh, affairs uh, for the East Asian integration? Basically, uh, uh, until very recently, uh, the East uh, Asian integration had its high heyday. Uh, Europe was ex European integration expanding, uh, as summarized by widening, uh, deepening, and enlargement. East Asian in initiatives, many, many East Asian in initiatives were emerging, uh, but um, Given the intensity of the talks and uh, interest, the performance was uh, rather disappointing. In the sense, there was no uh, important institutionalization. Nevertheless, uh, we see today two important maybe framework. Uh, first of all, ASEAN plus three. And second, uh, in the area of uh, financial and monetary cooperation, uh, AMRO, uh, which is an institution uh, to provide uh, financial support when uh, countries in Asia are, 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 are in crisis. What is present state of East Asian uh, integration? Uh, when I was uh, asked my a close colleague, uh, Professor Bach, to speak on this issue of East Asian uh, integration, I was uh, wondering what I should speak uh, because uh, I thought that uh, these East Asian initiatives and idea, East Asian integration ideas and initiatives are losing uh, their, their way uh, largely because of the rise in China. Furthermore, as you know, uh, recently 
the European financial crisis and Brexit uh, played uh, some uh, quite important role in discouraging our interest in uh, integration, basically. <coughs> and uh, the e emergence of uh, Trump administration in the US was another factor, maybe. Um, so, um, um, I, I'm not sure uh, what would be a, the future uh, way for East Asian uh, integration. Already, if you look at the economic uh, state of affairs, the uh, intra-trade share of China was uh, maybe from the mid-2000 uh, uh, decreasing quite uh, importantly. So uh, if there is uh, an integration or, or closer cooperation uh, in Asia, I think it is more uh, between China on one side and the rest of Asia on the other side. So if we have more this uh, initiative, it's more likely between countries uh, neighboring China against China. Uh, maybe uh, from this perspective, I think uh, the future relation between Korea and Japan will be really crucial. Maybe a, a and then uh, if maybe for some reason, if we have closer relation among our among uh, neighboring countries. Uh, then uh, we have also one very important question regarding the role of China. When Europe uh, started its integration, U.S. Uh, was rather uh, supportive, or at least it did not prevent from European countries uh, from forming the Union. But it's very likely China would be really against. Uh, so that. Uh, can we, can we really see some of uh, the integration in Asia? Well, uh, that's a question to uh, answer maybe, but uh, I have no idea at, uh, right now. So, uh, so this, uh, so I have uh, summarized the past, present, and future. In, uh, so, um, well, this is uh, my talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Professor Moon. I'd like to invite uh, Pem myung uh, editor-at-large at, at uh, Chungang Daily. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, ha I have no uh, PPT to show you, so allow me to speak at my place. Uh, my first time as a correspondent of the uh, correspondent in Paris for the Jungang Ilbo was back in 1989. It's a shame for me uh, to admit that back then I did not know about Zhang Monet. Uh, Professor Lee Jae-sung mentioned about the ignorance of Korean media about Zhang Monet. <laughs> uh, I learned about Zhang Monet um, as I studied uh, the history of the European integration before taking up uh, my mission as a correspondent. As I started working in Paris, I became aware of his uh, achievements and the status as a uh, founding father of the European coal and steel community, which later became the European Union. The title of my presentation is Europe, Zhang Monet, and Asia, Perspective from the Media. Uh, to tell you the truth, this was not my idea. The, the chair of this conference, <laughs> Professor Park, prom, uh, proposed Sorry. it, and I <laughs> accepted it without much thinking about it. <laughs> As I was wondering what to present today, I imagined uh, what advice Zhang Monet would give to the Korean people if he were alive and attended uh, this conference. If Zhang Monet were alive now, he would most certainly have advised the Koreans 
to present the vision of the Northeast Asian community centered in <coughs> Korea, China, and Japan, and to seek the key to peace and uh, prosperity of the Korean Peninsula within this community. Korea, China, and Japan have an unfortunate history of domination, occupation, aggression, and war. South Korea and Japan, allies of the United States, cannot be free from a potential conflict between China and the U.S. Should the U.S. and China collide in the trap of Tukididas, the entire Northeast Asian Asia is likely to become a battleground. It will be Zhang Monet's advice to consolidate Korea, China, and Japan into a single community like EU and enhance interdependency in order to make the world difficult. War is impossible without energy. How about using the smart grid technology to tie the three countries' energy supply chains together and launch the first step towards a Northeast Asian community by creating an energy community that jointly manages the supply and demand of energy. I think it would also be good to start with the Northeast Asian environment or climate change community centered on the fine dust issue that recently increasingly worsened. The next step is to form a single market in Northeast Asia uh, where goods, people, money, and the services are free to move uh, like in Europe. If students and young people from Korea, China, Japan are able to study wherever they want and freely get their jobs without a restriction, Northeast Asia will be a common house with a single roof in a generation or two. It would be another lesson for Zhang Mune that Korea should uh, take a leading role in realizing the dream of a prosperous and peaceful Northeast Asian community. Since ancient times, Korea has been a strategic element between China, a continental power, and Japan, a maritime power. Turning a geopolitical weakness surrounded by great powers into an opportunity, Korea could play a role as an anchor to firmly fix China and Japan in Northeast Asia as well as a bridge to link ocean and continent. Of course, I acknowledge that it is an unrealistic idea for Korea to lead the Northeast and Asian community at this stage. Should, uh, South Korea is now trapped in the conundrum of the North Korean nuclear issue. It is a pipe dream that cannot be realized before the permanent peace regime on the Korean Peninsula is settled uh, by resolving the North Korean nuclear issue and the two Koreas can overcome the division. Conflict with Japan is also a problem. Although Korea has liberated from Japanese colonial rule over 70 years ago, Korea and Japan are still continuing their antagonism and confrontation due to their past. If Zhang Wonhe were here, he may advise the two countries to make a real reconciliation based on the example of France and Germany before moving on to building a regional community. The future belongs to the dreamer. What I'd like to tell you today in the name of Zhang Monet is that you should raise big questions looking forward to the far future. No matter how ridiculous the questions are, you have to open your wings of imagination to pioneer a new future. The elephant in the room problem cannot be solved, can be solved only when the world around the room is toned down. For example, questions such as can the ROK-US alliance and the US-Japan alliance remain the same as they are now even after 30 to 50 years? How will the world order change when China becomes a superpower that surpasses the United States and what should Korea have to do with China? By supplying Wittgenstein's statement that the problem is not solved but disappears to the North Korean nuclear issue, would there be a way to make the problem of North Korean nuclear weapons disappear? Will the nuclear non-proliferation treaty be maintained in the distant future? Is there any way for the two Koreas to be one neutral nation like Austria or Switzerland? Zhang Monet was a well-connected pragmatic internationalist. He had an unrivaled international network of people along with the imaginative power 
and the grand vision of breaking the frame and insight for the future and the pragmatic sense. He had also the ability to persuade others with the distinguished personality and eloquence. Without Jean Monnet, Europe might have gone into words again. I would like to conclude this by wishing that a Jean Monnet of Korea, who has the art of the box thinking and international connections, is among all of you who attended today's conference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Lee. <coughs> Thanks a lot. So let's go over to the future discussion about future. Professor Yan Lee of Yonsei University. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Park. I am Yan Lee, I'm the director of the Zhang Mune Youth Center at Yonsei University. The topic of my speech is on the role of the EU on the Korean Peninsula. Actually, this is the question they have been um, confronted with um, the audiences uh, for the last many, many years. And I have just once or twice per year have a chance to give a speech on the uh, Korea-EU relations, uh, particularly in front of the um, junior or senior uh, government officers uh, being trained in the government organizations. After listening to my about an hour or two hours um, lecture, often I have been questions. Yes, Professor Lee, I can understand EU is important. Yes, it is particularly now important because of the Brexit. But I don't understand um, why, what kind of lesson we can get from it. Um, still, South Korea, to the um, position of the South Korea, USA is of prime importance because they are uh, stationing their military forces. They have a practical key of s solving the problems of the Korean Peninsula. Because of that experience, um, this topic, the role of the EU on the Korean Peninsula, became naturally my research topic. What EU can do for the sake of Korea? I think, um, I, I, let me put it this way. Why EU is important? Firstly, um, of all, um, EU is important because EU is an ideological alliance uh, to Korea. <laughs> EU and Korea, we have been signing um, mainly three important agreements. One is a framework agreement and, and strategic partnership and NFTA. In the preambles of those agreement, both parties agree that we are going to share the common values, which include non-proliferation of the WMD and human rights and anti-terrorism and development cooperation and democracy, human rights, and also other issues related to capitalism and democracy. I think this is very, very important uh, for the position of Korea. When we particularly talk about reunification and also cooperation between South and North Korea, the support, ideological support from the EU for South Korea will play a very, very important role in the defining the shape and the future uh, feature of the uh, uh, future of Korea's. So therefore, in that sense, of course, there can be a military solutions in um, designing the reunification or cooperation between South and North. But at the same time, there should be a, another dimension of the cooperation as well, which is non-military. In that respect, I think we need to make a close cooperation uh, with uh, EU. And also, we can uh, seek uh, support from the EU as well. And also, secondly, in order to, uh, if we are to consider peaceful cooperate, coexistence between South and North Korea, I think EU is, again, quite important as well uh, for the sake of Korea. Now, uh, when uh, in, in discussing the cooperation between South and North, uh, now the Minister of Unification is considering European option as well, which includes how South and North Korea can make a cooperation by taking advantage of the economic and functional um, cooperation between the two. If I review the cases of the um, 20s, um, the modern, uh, very modern history, the EU is the very good example of the success of the functional uh, cooperation. Uh, as the Professor Lee mentioned, 
the, they have started uh, this approach with the ECSC in 1951 and also EC 1957 and EC 1967 and uh, 57, EC 1967, finally EU in 1993. The ECSC, of course, it is a very, very much a strategic uh, case of the cooperation. At the same time, the idea started from the very economic and functional and secular uh, ideas. So how could they manage the market of the coal and steel, which is very important for the economy and also military uh, as well. So I think we can get the good lessons from the European cases as well if we are taking the, op the option of the economic cooperation between South and uh, North Korea. Certainly that uh, it should be, uh, EU should be a good example for that as well. Another aspect, uh, another aspect of the lesson we can get from the EU is a cultural cooperation. Once Zhang Monet um, uh, recalled, we need to recall the, the statement of the Zhang Monet. He argued that if we resume European integration, we will start in the cultural sector first. So cultural cooperation is, is related to the identity, how to make a joint and a common identity uh, amongst the members of a uh, cooperation body. So we need, if we are to think about the reunification and cooperation between South and North Korea, we need to think about joint and common um, identity between two Koreas. That could be uh, achieved through the cultural uh, cooperation as well. So particularly, EU is very good at that as well. Finally, not the least, one day we may need to think about human rights issue as well. At the certain stage, we may have to raise the issue of the human rights issue uh, in dealing with uh, the relationship with North Korea as well. So maybe that is a quite tough topic and it will not be easy to resolve. But in that uh, circumstances, <coughs> again, we can get a good cooperation and lesson uh, from the EU as well. In conclusion, why EU is important? What kind of lesson we can get uh, from the EU cases? Well, when I teach international politics, there are two kinds of issues. One is hard, the other is soft. So, well, when we deal with uh, uh, issues of soft politics, EU, certainly they will give uh, very good lessons and a good example we can uh, review very seriously. Thank you very much. I will stop here. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Lee from Busan National University. Uh, thank you for your invitation to this uh, conference. Yes, I am from the Busan National University. Yes. I am director of the PNU Center. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure whether the Mr. Zamboni would like to this kind of statistics in order for me to analyze this kind of Zamboni Center law and the contribution to Korean University. Uh, to, uh, let me introduce the, just a EU month activity in Busan National University. You told me we have the, the, this kind of activities, the EU Europe, Europe Day, Europe Day. And then uh, the Korean side the uh, contemporaries will go to the Pugyeong National University in order for us to participate in this kind of the EU session. And also, yes, we have the um, 2019 Global Gathering, Global Gathering. Uh, almost 20 or 30,000 uh, uh, foreigners will uh, gather together in order for to study some of the EU and some of the worldwide uh, concept. And also, yes, we, ha we have schedules to invite uh, the uh, ambassador of Latvia to Busan National University. Also, in the end of June, yes, we will go to Latvia uh, to extend some of the academic exchange uh, student scholar uh, pre uh, president and I will go to the Latvia. 
and also yes, we in, will invite our uh, Silicon CEO. He he's a uh, K-pop musician. Yes, he's a very interested in the not only the K-pop but also in worldwide as well as the EU. And also yes, we are going to participate in the Mark, uh, EU Council associated with t uh, this kind of activities. I I would like to introduce what's the role of the EU Center the using statistics. Actually speaking, as I presented this uh, last year at the Kyushu University, uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, unfortunately, yes, we we are going to talk about a lot the EU Center or the Zamboni Center. For as far as I know, only the Martin Hollands. Uh, in the New, New Zealand are uh, going to investigate this kind of e EU perspective, but he did not analyze the, uh, this kind of EU center uh, using the statistics. He described only uh, the wa wa what's the perspective of the EU. Therefore, yes, at that time, uh, I, I met him se uh, several times in other places where he talked about this several, several times, but at that time, I, I was somewhat complaining about his method, right? Therefore, yes, I, I would like to investigate it and uh, analyze the, what is the Zamboni Center and the EU Center uh, and the, the European study in Korea uh, using the empirical proof. Right? I'm not spend a lot of time yes because because the, the and because we don't have the sufficient time. But anyways, uh, let me summarize this. Yes. Uh, first of all, yes, I would like to inv investigate this. What what's the EU center is some some more centers low and the useful is you can the mean uh, 1.79, 1.77 yes. uh, one is very strong, yes. uh, five is very, very low. <coughs> Therefore the uh, trainer is I fo uh, focus on Busan National University EU Center nowadays the Harmony Center, right? Uh, the, the the students are, ve are very very proud of the usefulness of the EU class uh, opened by the EU Harmony Center EU Harmony Center. They are uh, it, me it means the EU class is very very uh, helpful for them to understand the EU EU. And also, and they are uh, very, very proud of the Busan National University EU Zamboni Center. Zamboni Center. Uh, our president should know this, right? Uh, this is the Zamboni Center Pride and Usefulness Program. Once again, uh, I investigated this uh, the using the student in PICAR. Professor Pika Lee, Lee, you have only one minute. Sorry for that. Maybe the Zamboni, uh, Zamboni will give me a more minute, I guess. <laughs> I just kidding. Okay, they said one or two is very, very proud. They are very, very proud of the Zamboni Center and the usefulness. Maybe 70 or 80 percent of students are very, very proud of Zamboni Center and very, very useful. And the Zamboni Center's program is also very, very useful. Almost 90 percent student. Mm. And uh, preference on the EU's hub and starting in the EU countries, uh, you can see that uh, Germany and France, the United Kingdoms are very, 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 very preferred by the students uh, in terms of job and in, in terms of study. Mm. Now, the, the, this is another kind, kind of analysis, right? This, you can see the EU knowledge, the students know EU on. Uh, E EU well, yes, they, they, they are very, very proud of the e EU center, the Harmonia center. They, they do not know the EU, they do not understand the EU. Yes. O only a few percent are yes, uh, proud of this. I mean, uh, if the students know the EU center, the e EU, well, uh, EU well, then they are so, so proud of the Harmonia center in Korea. And this is the... Usefulness and the role of Zamboni Center. Zamboni Center also yes, they know they know EU. They they have deep knowledge in EU. They are uh, they thought the usefulness and role of Zamboni Center are 
Uh, very, very large, right? Uh, comparing with, with the uh, low uh, knowledge student. Right? And there, there, there is a strong difference between uh, the high knowledge student and low knowledge student statistically. Oh, I would like to skip this part. And this part, th this is MANOVA test, right? Contribution. Um, you can see that this, this is dependent variable, this is independent or variable. They are, uh, the Korea EU FTA's contribution are largely to own Korean economy, the EU contribution, the world economy, Euro's contribution are largely and largely. Then you can see the pride of Japanese center is also largely and largely. There are positive relations between this and this. You can see this. And also useful in the Japanese center. And the studying program, you can see that. Okay, um, Professor Park uh, won me. <laughs> okay, let me stop here. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Professor Kim of User Korea. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador Reiter and Chair Professor Park for this uh, excellent uh, conference. According to Zhang Mone's uh, memoir, he said what he was interested in was to put the people together and to resolve the concerns that made the people divide. And finally, to persuade the people uh, to look forward to the common, their common interest. He also put uh, great uh, emphasis on the institutions which would make the people's decision and process as sustainable. As our uh, scholars uh, clearly analyzed, Zhang Mone program, Splendid, uh, has uh, supported and motivated the diverse academic uh, activities and networking uh, during the past uh, 30 years. Focusing on the sustainability <coughs> of the program, I'd like to pay my attention uh, to a dynamic mobility of the young people. According to the European Commission, Around 3.3 million of young people in the, e in the EU, it means 3.7% uh, uh, of the total young uh, people, has been benefited of the EU program for education, training, uh, youth, and sport in 2014 uh, to 2020. Up to 2 million students would be privileges of grants to study and training abroad. More than 135,000 students and staff could come to Europe and go outside Europe to take their special education, uh, training, uh, apprenticeship experiences. I find three points as interesting in the youth mobility in EU. First one is that their mobility can be characterized as a reciprocal. They move each other to share and know their different viewpoints as well as common interests. It's not a one-side tour or visit. A second one is that their mobility is supported by the institutions of the EU. They are uh, motivated spontaneously to enjoy their youth <coughs> and explore explore their ways toward more interesting work. Thirdly, they are making their own future by means of their interaction or mutuality, which should raise up their creativity. The young people in Asian countries need to develop not only their individual uh, ability, but also uh, their global ability and experiences. They need to take special opportunities of vocational studies and training on apprenticeship. But now, for example, the majority of Korean students tend to make a simple tour or visit in pursuing their own curiosity abroad. They do not have any interpenetrating multidimensional activities. Asian countries, even not, not all of the countries, have to be opener and more interactive so as to uh, offer more chances of youth mobility. It's necessary that they, especially Asia, ASEAN, means 10 uh, countries included, 
plus uh, three countries, Korea, Japan, China, try to establish an institution to mobilize and motivate the young people to a great community. The future of the Asian countries is upon them, who will confront with global competition and cooperation as more severely. In this context, I uh, briefly suggest three points. Uh, first, firstly, Asian countries have to deliver on education about Asian community value. For example, solidarity and regional peace building, as well as economic prosperity based on economic integration. It's the point that um, uh, Mr. Ambassador Reiter emphasized. Secondly, I like to uh, I'd like to establish an, uh, uh, a kind of foundation by which we, we uh, could offer a common testing opportunities of studying, training, trying global startup. Finally, based on this foundation, I want to suggest to uh, operate our interesting mm -hmm. program as like an Erasmus Plus program, including Zhang Mone activities, to encourage and raise up young people's Asia network and activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kim. Last but not least, we uh, like to have uh, Professor Kim Nam Go of Korea University. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Park, and thank you, Ambassador, and thank you for excellent audience. My name is Nam Go Kim at Korea University. I'm the last person to present on this difficult topic uh, was mandatory given to me by Professor Park as a future. As you know, the future is always murky and, and complicated. And if you want to make your, your, your future too much clear, then uh, you are now challenging the God or God's sphere. So I, I own to do that. Um, and I think about the Zhang Monet. Above all, I love his impressive words. For example, he said, uh, without people, we cannot initiate any new plans. Likewise, without in institutions, we cannot sustain any such plans. Uh, Zhang Monet did his best to bring reconciliation between France and Germany after World War II of a hatred and hosti uh, hostility. Uh, despite his vision of a perpetual peace through European integration, I, I believe he is a true realist because his plan of European core and steel community show a proper combination of interest, identity, and institutions, as, as Professor Lee mentioned. Uh, among these three factors, his emphasis goes foremost interest and the interest-based in, in integrations. Uh, this kind of realistic approach and the proper balance among uh, interest, uh, identity, and institution is, is important in East Asian situations. Uh, today's the Korea and Japan relations and also regional order in East Asia has been dominated by the present with hostage of past. So we share the past, but we cannot share the interpretation of that past. Such a hatred and animosity has overshadowed Asia's future. So we should find and build East Asian community <coughs> as a space of possibility beyond unhappy, the past memories. Uh, I also remember Zhang Monet's word in, in 1906. His father sent him abroad to work for his family, the family business and said, do not bring any books. No one can think for you. And then look out the window and talk to people. This is also a very realistic approach. Let me put it in this case in Asian situation. The Gannon, the NPO, and East Asian Institute survey yielded two interesting findings that could employ to lower the negative perception among the population of East Asian nations. The first factor is whether an individual ha ha has traveled to the, to the other countries. For example, South Koreans and Japanese people who have visited each other countries show more positive response than those who have not. The second factor is age. The younger generation in both South Korea and Japan uh, display lower the, the negative perception than older respondents. So in other words, the negative perception appear to be decreasing with every generation in Korea and Japan. That these results demonstrate the value of people-to-people -people interaction 
and the need for increased interchange and investment targeting younger generations. So current development in East Asia are once again being dominated by the state, with the North Korean nuclear crisis and tension in the South China Sea demonstrating the continued relevance of the state. In this context, East Asia could seek to pass the great, the great intrapersonal solidarity among its citizens who share an attachment to democratic individuality while also acknowledging cultural diversity as a way to venture beyond the nation state kind of identities. So by encouraging networking and cross-border solidarity, we should build a Asia of citizen rather than Asia of state. I, I once published this, the title of a paper. And Zhang Mone once also said the similar word, we are not forming coalition of state, we are uniting men for his vision for the European integrations. Lastly, I love also Zhang Mone's word, there are two kinds of people, he said, uh, those who want to be someone and those who want to do something. Of course, this word originally was said by his friend Dwight Morrow, who was a U US senator and US ambassador to Mexico. Uh, if the future generation of Asia concerned to do something rather than to be someone, and if that something becomes a stable peace regime through a regional cooperation in Asia, then the future of Asia will be different. In this sense, Zhang Mone still gives us a good insight for the situation in Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kim. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have finished our discussion. We have uh, discussed the personal background, economic and political doings of Zhang Mone, global total side of uh, Zhang Mone, and uh, contribution to peace and community building uh, in Europe, as well as we have uh, discussed the implications uh, he, he is giving to today's uh, East Asia, North East Asia, and Korean Peninsula. I'm uh, really sorry to all the panelists that uh, we have uh, been able to allocate only five minutes to seven maximum. Uh, but I think uh, if uh, Somebody uh, would like to uh, read or would like to have uh, some implications from this seminar. I think uh, we will make a small booklet out of uh, this discussion so that we will uh, disseminate it uh, through our networks. Thank you very much. And I'd like to hand over microphone to Professor Lee, master of the event. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Park, for proceeding this tight and challenge uh, the round table. Actually, uh, this, it, well, as, as you have seen, this was not uh, designed as a typical academic session. We, we, we did the long presentation and, and discussion. Rather, it was a short kind of series of short notes and short lectures on, on John Monet and his ideas. And as Professor Park uh, mentioned, uh, the, the, the EU Center and John Monet Centers uh, will try to make a, make a uh, brief the, the booklet on the outcome of this John Monet uh, Memorial Conference. Okay, uh, so we will wrap up uh, the, the John Monet Roundtable uh, session, and uh, and we will start the, the closing uh, ceremony. And, and the first part is the UCC award. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, KU KFSBC EU Center, sponsored by EU delegation, announced a UCC contest. It, it was a brief, they had the video clubs, the, well, uh, and, uh, and students, oh, not professional, but the, the students uh, were asked to participate uh, in, in the UCC contest. And uh, two best video clips that you have seen uh, before this session, uh, were selected as, as the best UCC. So the, the award ceremony uh, will be uh, led by His Excellency Ambassador Leiter. And we have two uh, awardee of the UCC contest. The first awardee is uh, Mr. Alessandro Scromo. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, Certificate of, of Recognition. Uh, this award is given to Alessandro Scromo, a Germany, the European Integration, for winning the best award in the 2019 Europe Day Student UCC contest, bringing John Monet back past, present, and future, organized by the KU Kiev SBC EU Center, Korea University, May the 9th, Europe Day 2019. His Excellency Mikhail Reicher, Ambassador of the European Union to the Republic of Korea. Congratulations. There is, uh, and and also the, uh, the additional special over. Yep. Award uh, will be bestowed by the uh, delivered by Professor Song Hoon Park, KU KFS VCU Center. The second awardee is is Miss Nam Kyung Kim uh, of Busan University, uh, but actually uh, uh, she has a very tight schedule, a class schedule, and she was uh, too far away. So uh, on on behalf this time on behalf of Miss. And I'm Gyeong Kim, uh, the director, Chad Kim, will uh, be the other uh, worthy. So this award is given to Nam Gyeong Kim, the better word with Zhang Monet. The content is same as above. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. <clears throat> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a very special guest for to congratulate uh, this Zhang Money Memorial Conference and also the EU Day events. Uh, President Zhang Jin Tech of Korea University uh, came here to give a closing remark. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming. President Chong Jin Tech with, with a warm round of applause. His Excellency, Dr. Bihai Leiter, EU Ambassador to Korea. Uh, Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues and friends and ladies and gentlemen. First of all, happy Europe Day and welcome to Korea University. It's my great pleasure and honor to deliver on behalf of Korea University these closing remarks, actually closing remarks, for the successful completion of the Zhang Monet Conference celebrating the 2019 Europe Day and the 30th anniversary of Zhang Monet program of the European uh, Union. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the European Union and Korea University has built, have built a long-term special friend, friendship. At the beginning of the 1980s, Korea University established EU Research Center, uh, which was the first such research center ever established by an institution of higher education in Korea. The research and education activities within Korea University have grown continuously ever since, and we at Korea University are extremely proud of the fact that three of six total number of Zhang Monet chairs awarded by the European Union to Korea are Korea University professors. We have been enriched by this and other EU-related research and educational programs over the past three decades. Thanks to the European Commission's generous support, Korea University was able to also upgrade the EU Research Center by establishing KU Kiev SBS EU Center in May 2014. Throughout this project's lifespan, the EU Center significantly promoted EU-related academic uh, research and outreach activities in Korea. Since September 2016, Korea University has awarded, was awarded Zhang Monet Network Project and has played a leadership role in an international uh, research con symposium, a consortium in exploring the EU's st strategic partnership with Asian countries. As the president of Korea University, I strongly believe that this way, 
the Korea University was able to establish itself as the hub of EU studies in the Asia Pacific region and has played a very important role in bridging Asia and Europe. This Jean Monnet conference is a meaningful event for all of us. In this year, the European Union has been celebrating the 30th anniversary of Jean Monnet actions through a series of events around the world under the grand theme of grand theme of Jean Monnet 30 years of excellence in EU studies. It is indeed my great pleasure to be a part of these worldwide activities. I am fully aware that the conference has discussed the past, present, and future of Jean Monnet, who is the one of founding fathers of the European integration. Many discussions today uh, will provide a valuable opportunity to earn invaluable lessons for the peaceful and prosperous coexistence of countries in Asia, and more specifically, Northeast Asia. As some panelists have already elaborated, the ideas and philosophy of Zhang Monet and Zhang Monet programs have given, have given us inspiration on the connectivity and identity and community building among the different cultures and nations in the Asian region. I sincerely hope that today's discussion contributes greatly to the reconciliation among nations in this part of the world that is desperately, need, desperately needed for the peace building uh, process. We have to continuously find new areas and ways to cooperate, ways of cooperation in this changing world. For this important mission, Zhang Monet has already given us the invaluable instruction. He said, make men work together. Show them that beyond their differences and geographical boundaries, there lies a common interest. Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. if we work together under this spirit, I'm sure that we can achieve our final goal of peaceful prosperity in the world, and more specifically in Asia. Closing my remarks, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to the KUKF SBS EU Center and the Nordic uh, Benedict Center of the Korea University for organizing this important event. Also, my genuine thanks to goes to the panelists who have greatly contributed to the success of this conference. Last but not least, I would like to thank Ambassador Leitner uh, for his continuous support for this EU studies in Korea University and other universities in Korea. We at Korea University will continue to offer higher quality or highest quality education programs and conduct excellent research with regards to the European Union. I offer my full support. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, President Chong. So uh, we will now wrap up the John Monet Memorial Conference. And once again, on behalf of the organizer, I thank all the panelists and audience who participated in, in, this, the, in this meaningful event and showed their warm attention. Thank you very much, and happy Europe Day. <laughs>